Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again. Today's a bit of a strange one. Um, obviously, I'm talking to start off my decks built on Ezrim Agency Chief, but we're very much into investigation with this deck today. So I'm doing a kind of a, it's not a split, it's the same deck. It just depends on the commander you want to play. Because the other commander you can play quite happily with this deck is the other part of the Detective Agency, Alquist, Prophet, Master Sleuth. Um, Depends which one you want to play. The deck plays exactly the same way because we're about clues. Yes, you've got two different abilities, but obviously, yeah, Alquist is fine. So it has the built-in life gain card draw when you sack a clue. Um, we know what it does, but I just prefer Ezrim. So we're going to stick with Ezrim, but just bear in mind when we're talking about this deck, you can play this all prof. Okay, anyway, so Ezrim, one double white, double blue for a 5-5 five, five Archon Detective. Um, and when Ezrim enters the battlefield, we get to investigate twice. So, you know, every time we get cast them in from the command zone, we get two clue tokens, which is nice. And then we can sack an artifact. So sacrifice one of the clues to either do Vigilance, Lifelink, or Hexproof until the end of turn. Um, yeah, not the most exciting card in the world, but it's been a long time since I've tried to build a blue-white control deck, full commander, and both this version and the Prof's version are really based around that with the clue tokens and a few other little bits and pieces. So without further ado, let's actually look at the real deck itself and how I'm going to be playing this on stream. As usual, start with the mana base. Um, yeah, blue and white lands, unsurprisingly. <laughs> um, nothing too idiotic in here. There's no sort of like field of the dead or anything else. We've kept it fairly sane. Um, have got Obscure of Storefront in here so we can go and fetch out an island or planes if we need to. Um, there's sort of like Temple of the False Gods here, Reliquary Towers here somewhere, there you go. Um, rest of the Anchorage is here, because it's quite nice having the bird that comes in and gives them the right facts. It just gives a map token, which is quite helpful when it gets the um, attack on the go, so bear that in mind, that could help sort your mana base out. Um, but beyond that, nothing really you wouldn't expect to see in the deck from that point of view, but I have gone heavy, a little bit heavy on the artifact ramp, purely because of how much Ezrim is going to cost once we get killed off a couple of times, and the fact that we want to try and get Ezrim in play as soon as possible, just so we have that 5-5 five, five flyer for 5. So, we've got Jeweled Lotus to help out with the double mana costing side of things, we've got Mana Crypt to give us some colourless mana, yes we may die to the damage it deals, but now well, it's a risk we take on MTGO. Um, Soul Rings here, and then we have Arcane Signet, Marble Diamond, Pearl, uh, where's the other diamond? Sky Diamond, Mind Stone, Pearl Medallion, Sapphire Medallion, Talisman of Progress, Thought Vessel, and Magnifying Glass. Magnifying Glass you're probably wondering about. It's a three mana card that does nothing, but it does give us the fact to create more clue tokens. Um, four mana to tap to investigate isn't great, but it does give us the clue tokens that we may need to keep everything going with the rest of the deck. So, with that in mind, let's go through the rest of it. Obviously, in the one-drop slot, we have Novice Inspector and its partner in crime, Thraben Inspector, which I really wish would be transformed into a detective, but I know it never will be due to the amount of reprints it has, but hey, that's the way it goes. Hard Evidence is here, just so we can have the crab and the clue for one blue mana, which seems pretty good to me. Um, yeah, it's a 0-3 crab that's not going to do anything, but it's a nice early doors blocker, so it helps. Elixir of Immortality is here, just so we can shuffle everything back in when it gets used up. And then, because, you know, I've already mentioned Magnifying Glass, I figured it's worthwhile having the Thinking Cap in as well. We have quite a few detectives in the bunch, um, so having this as a bit of equipment and a little homage to Sherlock Holmes is pretty cool in my book. Um, Declaration of Stone is here, it's just targeted removal. You can take this out, you can play Source Supply Shears, you can play Path to Exile, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a problem, but it does help if you're trying to exile a whole load of, say, goblin tokens that have been appearing or dog tokens. So, yes, your opponents get a whole load of clues for each creature that's exiled, each non token creature that's exiled this way. Um, but hey, hum, if the tokens come out, they ain't going to get that many clues, are they? So, good. Um, 10th District Hero is fun. Um, I'm pretty sure this is meant to be Sherlock Holmes in some form or other, but whatever. Um, collecting the evidence can be a bit of a pain with this deck, but you know, it's a 2 2. When you collect for 2, you become a 4 4 with Vigilance. And if you collect another 4, so 6 collections all together and a whole load of mana, 
10th District Heroes Detective, it becomes a legendary creature named Milav the Stalwart, and it has base power and toughness 5 5, and it gains other creatures you control have indestructible. Sounds good to me, but it's just, you know, do you want to risk having everything go out of your graveyard into exile when you're collecting the evidence? We have a few forecast, you know, four mana value spells that can do the collecting thing, so maybe. Anyway, Cyclonic Rifts here, as you can imagine, to control the board. The juice is card draw and investigate. Edwell Illuminator. Um, whenever you investigate for the first time, you investigate an additional time, so that's nice. Mana Leak for Control. Prof's Identic Memory also makes an appearance from MKM. Um, draw a card, you have no maximum hand size. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've drawn more than one card this turn, put X plus one plus one counters on target creatures you control, where X is the number of cards you've drawn minus one. So if you draw two, you get one plus one. If you draw three, you get two plus one plus ones. If you draw four, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's good fun. It pumps up your creatures a little bit. Manage rain, counter spell, or counter spell manage rain, I should say, to help control the board a little bit. Um, Danik PS Apprentice is also here to shut down anything going coming out of the graveyard. And then if we get it flipped into the Spirit Soldier, whenever one or more creature cards are put in graveyards from anywhere, we get to investigate. Yes, it only triggers once a turn, but it gives us more clues. And since our deck needs clues, it sounded good to me. Right, um, moving from there into the three drop slot. Armed with Proof is one of the cards from the MKM Commander set. This one comes into Battlefield, we get to investigate twice. And clues you control are equipment in addition to their other types and have equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and equipped two. Hmm. That makes your little force of def detectives a little bit bigger as things go along. Bygone Bishop lets you have a creature spells when you cast them. Um, we don't have many, but you know, three mana or less, um, we get to investigate. Rosie Cotton is one of the three mana or less ones, so she gives us some food. You've got a feature detective somehow, haven't you? Teferi's Protection keeps everything sane. Wojak Investigator, the beginning of your opponent, of upkeep. Investigate once for each opponent has more cards in hand than you. So a nice global effect from MKM that I don't think many people have realised, but it is, does check every single opponent in Commander. Um, Detective of the Month is just another one of the MKM Commander cards. It has a send, so you know, got to make sure you've got the 10 permanents in play. And as long as you have the City Blessings, and this is in play, Detectives you control can't be blocked. So, you know, a bit of an overrun effect, get your Detectives through. And whenever you draw your second card each turn, you get a 2-2 white and blue Detective Creature token. So, it does help. Follow the Bodies um, has Grey Storm. Whenever you cast a spell, copy it for each permanent print to Graveyard from the battlefield this turn. You get to investigate. Yeah, you can sack a few clues. Technically, they do go to the Graveyard before they vanish. So, you yeah, know, you might get a few more things with Follow the Bodies. Um, Forensic Gadgeteer from MKM. Cast an Artifact spell, we get to investigate. We have a lot of Artifact spells, as you can see. Um, and then Artifact Abilities of Artifacts you control cost one less to activate. Hmm, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Zero equipped cost onto a detective, I think, if I'm reading it right, but we'll see. Uh, midnight Clock, a little bit more mana ramp, and another way of shuffling our graveyard back into our library before we exile it with the 12th counter. Trail of Evidence, whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we get to investigate, which we, yeah, quite a few instances of sorceries in the deck to control the board. And Windfall. I figured we needed some way of drawing extra cards some of the time that wasn't just involved around clues. Um, yeah, I went win for, so it's here. Abulu Ancestral Echo is also here. Um, just a way of bouncing some of our creatures in and out to make sure we get things happening. So, you know, bouncing in and out, novice or Thraben Inspectors, or even, I don't know, most go on Rosie Cotton to get the food tokens can work and does help. Um, our alternative commander is also here, Alquist, Prof Master, Sleuth. If you want to put change of commanders over, feel free. It will deck works just the same as I said earlier. Falmir, Steward of Gondor. Um, this really does need to come out if you're going to be playing Alquist as your commander. I've got Falmir in here on the pure chance we have this in play and then we class Ezim and we become the monarch and get some 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of point in doing it otherwise, to be honest with you. Um, if you don't want to play it this way, take this out, replace it with something else. Um, uh, maybe a 37th land, 
but I'm playing it because I'm hoping we can do this little tricky combo. Just once would be nice. Private Eye, as you know, pumps all your detectives up and then you can make a, if you draw when you draw your second card, target detective you control can become unblockable. Hmm. <laughs> Academy Manufacturer, it's a clue deck. You didn't really expect me not to have this in the deck, did you? Yeah. Get a clue, get a food, get a treasure. Get a clue, get a food, get a treasure. Yeah, okay then. <laughs> to help that out and make sure the tokens do come out regularly we've got anointed procession to double everything up um griff nought tracker is just because it's a detective but it does have the ability of exiling a couple of cards and you there are a few reanimated decks i've seen recently in commander land on mtgo so hope so search your premises is just a great way of getting your investigate tokens on the go when people attack you you get to have investigation or a planeswalker yeah that's fine by me yeah, we'll move on for Smothering Tide, it's fine. Um, I went with Day of Judgment just for a bit of theme on the thing. Yeah. Um, people get judged in court. We have got a lot of detectives. We're doing a lot of investigations, so the Day of Judgment arrives quickly. Obviously, you can change this to Wrath of God if you want to. Um, Merchant of Truth is another one of the MKM Commander cards. When our creatures die, we get to investigate, and then all our clues have Exalted, which can be quite painful because um, if you've got four or five clues in the play and you attack with one creature that's plus four plus four or plus five plus five hitting that creature um, especially if you've drawn a second card made it unblockable and you put it all on it from the agency chief you can alpha strike with this deck if you have enough clues in play bear it in mind um, Mondrak is also here and um, we'll sacrifice a couple of artifacts to make Mondrak indestructible as soon as possible and double up on our token production again no witnesses, I figured if we were playing Day of Judgment, we might as well play no witnesses as well. At least we get a clue if we've got the most creatures in play. Unlikely, but we'll see. Cold Case Cracker just dies, gives us a clue token. That's fine, it's a 3-3 fly for 4 mana. Yeah, it's not great, but hey, clue token. Ethereal Investigator from the MKM Commander set is also here. Enters the battlefield to investigate X times, where X is the number of opponents we have. And then whenever we draw our second card, we get some spirit tokens we're flying to block with, which is quite nice um, another great target to blink in and out with abuku if we want to cryptic command counter draw tap bounce whatever you want to do you know all no cryptic and ogetize command is also here um return target creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield gain some life counter a target spell draw card this is purely here to make sure that we can keep the illuminator in play as much as possible so we get those extra investigations going on <coughs> excuse me Humble the Brute, targeted removal for anything with power of formal, we get a clue. Access denied is lovely. Um, counter target spell, and then we get all those X11 Thopter creature tokens with flying where X is that spells of mana value. Love this card. Probably one of my favourite command spells, especially since it came from Kamigawa. Um, I love this as one of the counter spells. It's great. Just love it. Tamiyo's Journal, just so we get investigating each turn, and then we can sack three clues, find a card out of our grave hat library and put it into my hand. So that's cool. The most hated removal spell, I think I know from amongst all the people I play with regularly on MTGO, my uh, moderators and so on and so forth, um, Farewell is here. Yes, I think it's going to get banned at some stage in Commando. I think people are getting too upset with it. Um, but for now, it's here and it does have the point of resetting the entire board if we need it to. So yeah, let's go for it. Hot shot investigators, um, ends about for the field, return up to one target creature to its owner's hand, and if you controlled it, investigate. It's just a 4 4 detective, really. Probably can come out, it's probably not good enough to be in the deck. Um, I am very tempted to change it, so if you've got any ideas, let me know in the comments down below and tell me what you get rid of it for. Um, Agency Outfitter is also here, um, but I like this one. This one's a bit more fun because it does go and get us our thinking cap and our magnifying glass when you come into play. Um, and you get to put them onto the battlefield. So, you know, six mana for, well, one mana reduction, so maybe five mana plus this. Yeah, I can quite happily play this, fetch this, put this on, equip this to this, and have another 5-5 five five in the air, which is kind of painful for some people. Last couple of cards, Junkwinder, um, not a detective, one of the few, well, about the only, one of the few creatures I should say that isn't a detective, but has affinity for tokens, so that's quite nice, so it probably comes down for two mana a lot of the time. And whenever a token enters a battlefield under your control, tap target non-land permanent opponent controls, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Um, 
there's a lot of words on that. I have no idea why they don't say put a stun counter on it. It would be a lot simpler if one knows what the stun counters do now. It does the same thing. Um, but yeah, still good fun. Still something that needs to come into play. And the final card, Emergency Powers. Another way of shuffling everything from our graveyard back into our library. Drawing seven. This gets exiled. <coughs> Excuse me. But play it in your main phase, not as an instant. No, treat it as a sorcery because then you get to put something with seven mana value or less from your hand onto the battlefield. And that does help quite a bit. Um, and that's it. That's my take on Ezrim Agency Chief. As I said, you can play Proft in the command sound if you want to. You can take one of the cards out and put in something else. But this is how I'm going to play it. Um, oops, haven't changed my camera over. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's good fun. I haven't built a really dedicated blue-white control deck. It's something I get nagged at quite a lot from my moderators that when I play blue-white, I just play a couple of counter spells and go down the other way. So I've tried to make this a bit more controlly. Um, Hopefully you'll come and watch me play on stream. Um, link down below to the Twitch stream. If you haven't already, please hit the sub button here. I'm sitting at 3.45 as I record this video. So the more the merrier. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers on YouTube by the end of the year. So I'll be very happy if that could happen. Please also help me out with the algorithm. Hit the like button. Um, that also helps. Even if you don't subscribe, if you can just do that, that'd be great. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with some more deck takes. Um, there hopefully will be a stream replay coming up later tomorrow or the weekend so keep your eyes open for that you can see what we get up to on stream if you can't join us on stream but for now thanks for watching i'll see you soon bye